taste tests. Taste test is where we evaluate the taste of a food product, whether on its own or compared with other products. Some taste tests will be conducted blind, while others will focus on a particular brand or item. I want to start this week's test, taste test with questions I've received from viewers on Instagram. Our first viewer wrote, I love your taste testing part of the show. I'm 52, retired, currently exploring Arizona, and living the van life. I was wondering what you would suggest as simple but makes for a good presentation for guests around the campfire. Something that works with alcohol. Thanks, and keep it going. Another viewer wrote, I love the way you explain how different wines taste, but you compared them to your favorite everyday wine and never mentioned what wine it was. Maybe you can taste it for us. First, I want to thank you guys for watching and taking the time to reach out. I've decided to incorporate your questions into the segment this week. We're going to have my favorite everyday wine and make a charcuterie board. This is my simple recommendation. It will go with an assortment of beverages. Most people will find something that they like. And if you take the time to present it well, it should have an impact at the campfire. Charcuterie is something I love, and this is going to be fun for me. I'm always making small charcuterie boards as a lunch or a snack. There's so many, app, so many options that it never gets old for me. Now, charcuterie is a French term for a branch of cooking devoted to preparing meats such as bacon, ham, sausage, terrines, pâtés, confit, mostly pork products. It was originally intended as a way to preserve meat before the event of refrigeration. They are prepared today for their flavors derived from the preservation process. Charcuterie has evolved from its traditional French appreciation for cured and cooked meats to become a culinary art form that's more focused on flavor, pairings, and eye appeal. What you'll typically find on a charcuterie board is cured meats, cheese, olives, nuts, dried fruits, jellies, preserves, crackers, toasts, or baguettes. Today, I just grab things that I eat regularly from the fridge, throw them in a cooler, and haul to here. So let's get right into this. All right, so here's our plate. Today, like I said, I just grabbed some things that I eat regularly from the fridge, threw them in the cooler, hauled them here, and I just assembled, assembled them. It took me maybe 10 minutes to make this. And um, let's take a look. We have uh, the liverwurst. We have the pate. have gourmet cheese. Um, next to, the, to that, we have the... Uh, pepper jack cheese, we have the jalapenos, and we have uh, red onions. We have the salami, the Atlantic salmon, the prosciutto, the copacolo, uh, and the mackerel. All right, so the first thing I want to start off with is I want to grab me a cracker, and I've had the taste for liverwurst. I haven't had liverwurst in a while. And it's something that I used to eat very regularly, but I'm kind of particular about my liverwurst. And I only certain brands that I, I like to eat. This is made by a company called Wellshire. They're nobody special, but I know they make decent stuff. So liverwurst, if you don't want to eat it on a cracker, liverwurst with some chopped onion, some, uh, I'm sorry, uh, sliced onions just regular white onions or yellow onions, delicious. Now this was an answer to a question about something that you could present that um, would have some kind of impact. Now I'm not saying this is super califragilistic, Stick special, but if you take the time to present it and you give all of these choices, I think people will be halfway impressed. They'll know that you took a little time and effort for them, 
And the thing about it that I like is if you make a charcuterie board like this for a group of people and you don't really know who, who who's all at the campfire, um, somebody's going to like something here. And if you have some vegetarians or some pescatarians, um, you just add more add more things for them that you think they'll they'll like because there's so many different things. Like I said, uh, charcuterie used to be um, it was like a a cooking art on how to preserve meats, but now it's more about showing off particular meats with uh, other things on a board more so. That's it's kind of become more like an art more so than uh, culinary. Now, hold on just a second. I, I left an ingredient. I'll be right back. Okay, so I, I had to get some uh, soy sauce. It's, it's an important ingredient to this, so I had to get it. I went all the way back to the car for it. Okay. Now, one of the other questions that I was asked was, about what was my everyday wine. Well, my everyday wine is whatever my wife buys it and pours every day. And this is our wine. It's a menage a trois. It's a red blend and it's delicious. And that's why it's my everyday wine. It's about, it averages about 10 bucks a bottle, which is, I think, a pretty decent price for a a wine that you're going to be drinking every day. I think that's a a budget-friendly price. And um, I don't know if they're still there, but me and my wife went to their actual winery in Napa Valley. Forget that name, that main road that you drive down where you pass all of the different uh, wineries. It was on that main road. I can't think of what the name of that main road is. If you know, say it down in the description or if you've been there. Um, and you've probably heard of it. It's it's not like a, a, a secret wine. It's a pretty popular wine. They do well. Um, but if you haven't heard of it, Menage a Trois, I highly recommend it. It's a good wine. has a good smell. It has a fruity flavor. Um, it's a consistent flavor. Some wines that I drink, it's a bottle to bottle or case by case thing as far as their taste. In general, they may taste the same, but there's a little slight difference. Somehow, however they make their wine, it's always the same. It's always consistent, and it's a good consistent. It has a, um, a like a plum flavor to it, but I don't think there's any plums in it. Okay, it's going to take too much homework. I should have checked for that before, but it has it has like a dark plum taste. Um, but it, it's a blend, so it's a mix of different red wines. It's a safe wine, too. This is a, this is a wine, if you bring it to an uh, event, a group of people, a campfire, whatever it may be, if they halfway like wine, even if, if, even if red wine isn't their favorite wine, they're going to they're gonna be okay with this wine. This is a safe wine. If, uh, this is, if I was uh, in charge of a wedding reception and they said they need a red wine and we could only have one red wine, this is the one that I would absolutely pick because I know that the only way you're not going to like it is you don't like red wine. That's the only way. It's, uh, it, it's a safe wine. It, it's no tricks. It's just a good, consistent wine. Um. It, it's it's more on the fruity flavor side than it is on the alcoholic taste. You know how once you when you first take a sip and then like that aftertaste you get and it's like a little alcohol type taste. 
You don't get that with this. And that's why I like it because I can, I can, I can drink a whole bottle of this. I've done it many times and it just goes down smooth and I'm shocked. And I grab the bottle. I'm like, Oh, I, I drank a whole bottle and I'm not really a drinker. You, you guys are going to get tired of me saying that I'm not a drinker. And he's like, he, he drinks every week and he, he seems like he's doing okay, but I'm, I'm really not a drinker. And, uh, like, uh, even though I'm calling this my everyday wine, I do not drink wine every day. It's usually when I'm sitting with my wife, like watching a movie. Like we watched a movie we had been waiting to come out um, on Amazon this weekend that we watched together. And we had a bottle of this wine, some sushi and some wine. Okay, so let's go back to this charcuterie board. Now, almost every basic charcuterie board has the salami, some kind of salami, some kind of um, cheese. And then people go in different directions. I like a lot of seafood on mine, and I actually pulled back on that because I've had some of the products that I would normally have on here, I've shown you other weeks, so I didn't want to have it up here. Uh, Cause I, I like to have like um, oysters, clams, mussels, all of them smoked out of cans. And uh, I like sardines. I really like sardines. I like sardines uh, when they pack them in hot sauce and mustard. I like them when they're just packed in olive oil. Um, the rare time that I've had them, I like them cooked fresh. I've only had them cooked fresh twice. Once in Florida and once in, I don't remember. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to start eating some of this stuff. Now, I already told you about the pate. And the pate, that's going to be, that's gonna be one of the things that's going to be iffy with some people. It has, um, if you've had liver, you have an idea of the taste. You don't know the exact taste, but you know the ballpark taste that I love. Now, I want to show you something that I make. This is something I eat regularly. I want you to check this out. The main reason I have the red onion and the jalapeno here is because I like to take a piece of salmon about that size. And I take a piece of jalapeno. I stick it right smack dab in the middle. I take, take a little bitty chunk of onion and I put it on there too. And then uh, I just take this. And I wrap it up. And then I dip it in my soy sauce. The salmon with the red onion and the jalapeno with the soy sauce. It's a salty, savory flavor. Um, it's delicious. If you like salmon, you're going to love this. If uh, jalapenos, spice doesn't bother you, you're going to love this. Now, if you're like borderline on the spicy thing where like you can eat some things spicy, some things not, you know, you're, 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 right, you're, you're right on the border. Just make sure that the jalapenos you get, get the ones that are in the jar in, in, in like the oil. Make sure to read and get the ones that say mild and they'll be more uh, spicy than they'll be hot. It won't be a heat hot. It'll be a spicy hot. It'll be a flavorful hot, which is what I'm looking for. All right, we're going to try something more traditional, but I'm, I eat it a little different. I like a wheat cracker. Yeah, I'm a sucker for red onion. And this particular cheese that I've I've got, 
I've been eating the same cheese forever. Pepper jack cheese. I like stuff with a little spice in it. Otherwise, the cheese is kind of boring to me. Now, the person who asked me the question about what's something quick and easy to serve at the campfire, you don't have to have this many things. I'd say minimum have three items, have it have at least one meat, one cheese, and one other of something else that you think others would like. Or... You know, Google search charcuterie. Uh, like I said, you can have as a minimum of three. But I've seen spreads where there's literally 50, 60, 70 different types of, of choices of different meats and cheeses and pâtés and mousses and uh, pistachio nuts and almonds and figs and all types of stuff. So there's no limits to this. And in my opinion, it's very hard not to like a jacuterie board. It's just put the stuff on it that you like. If you don't like nothing up here that you see, that doesn't mean you don't like a jacuterie board. That means you don't like the jacuterie that I picked. So check it out. If you Even if you don't like what you see here, just check it out. This is a good, good thing around the campfire. And it'll be gone quick. And the cleanup, all you have to do is, is clean your board. Just clean your board and your knives and maybe some silverware. But most people will eat half the stuff with their hands. Now, I have the prosciutto up here, but it was more for an example. I'm not really a prosciutto fan, but we're going to have some. Yeah. And when I say I'm not a fan of it, I'm not a fan of it in this form. I love it when it's used like as a flavor enhancer to something else. Well, not really of a fan of it here. I got a real good deal on it, so I, I just threw it in the cart. I get my groceries delivered from Amazon, and they'll, to make you spend more money, I feel like they have algorithms or something, and they'll, they'll suggest something uh, that you normally like, that you want, and it'll be at such a cheap price that even though you weren't shopping for it that particular day, you're like, oh, let me get that. So, because I, I think it was like a dollar ninety nine, and this particular prosciutto is like twelve ninety nine. So, and I wouldn't have got it otherwise. <laughs> so, something else that I really like are pates. I love all kind of pates. I have a friend of mine. He lives in Maine, and he makes his own pates. I love I love pates. He makes good pates. I don't I don't know anybody else who makes them, so I'm forced to buy them. I, I guess I could learn. I've I've uh, watched on YouTube, and I um, I don't think it's like a really hard process, but it, it's just not my thing. It's not exciting to me. So this particular pate. There's a pork pate it's called a um, capanga champagne or champagne or something like that. Just the most popular, most common pate that's sold. You can go to practically any halfway decent grocery store and they'll have this kind of pate. Now, this is a good brand of pate, but it's a very ordinary pate and it's delicious. I waited too early 
I mean, I'm sorry, I waited too late. I wanted to order a duck pate, but it would have got here after the show. Do you like duck? Because I love duck. I love duck. Most people that I know, if they do like duck and they do make it, they only make it like for like Christmas or New Year's or something like that. I cook a duck whenever I want a duck. Ducks are good. And living here in Washington, we have several different farms to choose from. You can go to the farmer's market, and those farms will, will be there. And you can get duck that's like a day old. Get it, If you want to cut up, they'll cut it up how you want, or they'll give you just the parts that you want. Some of them even have, like, uh, bags of scraps from them, like, you know, uh, Cutting, cutting off the breast and everything, and then they have parts left over for, for stock. I love duck. And then there's a, there's a company in, uh, I should have mentioned this. Yeah, there's a company called D'Artagnan's in New York. Remember that. Uh, anything that you see up here, they've got the best version of this. Uh, so if you ever like trying to have like a real high-end charcuterie board, I recommend going on to uh, D'Artagnan uh, website and ordering, but it's expensive. So, you know, we, we always talking about saving some money, but you ain't going to save no money if you do that. But you will never forget the food that you get from them in, in eight. I like to get my ducks from them. Okay, so the next thing we're going to eat is some mackerel. Now, this is from uh, Patagonia Provisions. If you guys haven't, haven't figured it out yet, I eat a lot of things from Patagonia Provisions. I'm, I'm a fan of Patagonia. I'm a fan of that. I really don't trust no big companies, but when a company at least tries a little bit, I have to respect them. And they admit that uh, part of, of their production and their work is uh, destructive to the environment like a lot of companies, but they're actually trying to lessen their impact on the environment. They actually put forth an effort. They actually take some of your money and put it back into the ecosystem and saving the world. So I feel good when I, when I buy clothes from Patagonia. I feel good about when I get food from them. I feel like um, I'm doing something with my money. Now, the mackerel, I think I told you about this on another show. I'm going to show you right now. You can take some of this Gournay. Right, you take a little gourmet cheese, and we're gonna cut up some red onion real small and put it into the gourmet cheese. And we're gonna take a little bit because we're only making a small portion. I could actually use all of this, but I'm just making an example here. So uh, put some mackerel in there. And you just mix it up. And I'm telling you, it, it's, it's, just, it's like a mackerel spread, but better. And you can make a sandwich. You can put it on a cracker. You can eat it like that. Now, the way I make mine, I also add jalapeno. Yep, I, I did tell you about it. I remember, I think a couple of weeks ago I told you about this. So I'm glad I get to show you now. Okay, and so you put a little bit on your cracker. Again, it's gourmet cheese, jalapeno, red onion, and mackerel. And it doesn't have to be mackerel. It can be salmon. It can be um, smoked salmon. And it or it can be um, sardines. Sardines is actually my preference. 
It can be tuna. And this is something if you mixed up, it'll taste good. It wasn't hard to make. And it won't be the same old stuff that you eat all the time at camp. Something new. Something new. And, you know, a lot of times something new means extra work. And I'm saying it's just different work. I'm not talking about doing more work. Just different work. Different food. Different preparation. I love this. I don't know if I mentioned it. Um, tuna goes good with this too. Now, another reason why I'm suggesting charcuterie boards is because we're supposed to be talking about people on an overlanding trip. So I don't want to suggest a bunch of fancy things to do that, one, you're not going to be able to find whatever it is that, that I'm talking about or um, it's something hard to do. This is something that Everything up here will, if your fridge went out or you, you didn't have ice, nothing up here is going to spoil. Um, the cheese needs a little refrigeration. The pate would do better having some refrigeration. But if you like ran out of ice, you could go a day or two and the pates will be fine. You can go two or three days and the gourmet cheese and the pepper jack cheese will be fine. You can go three to four days and the salmon and the um, salami would be fine. The salmon, I'm sorry, the mackerel is in a can, so it'll definitely be fine. So what I'm saying is these are things that you can put in your fridge, can put in your cooler, can put in your dry box, and later on in the trip, pull them out. Uh, or you can eat them right away. My point is is that there's, you don't have to plan to hurry up and eat them that first or that second day. Uh, and I do that. I like, I, I like a good piece of fish. Um, fish is actually my favorite food. Seafood, I should say, is my favorite food. And um, I think it's time for me to try some more of this wine. Now, it's getting warmer here, and I've been riding my bike, and I'm feeling, I'm feeling good. And what I'm leading up to is um, either next week or the week after, I'll be doing a show outside. That's all I know. I don't know what I'm, how exactly it's going to go. I don't know where it's going to be, but my plan is to get outside. And no matter if I do a show or not outside, I plan on doing some cooking segments outside. Because um, I can't do them in here. Uh, fire alarm will go off. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. I want to make sure that if there's something I wanted to tell you that I, that I haven't forgotten it. I told you about each food. I tried them all. Um, I showed you my, my mackerel and cheese mix. I told you what my wine was, which is a menage a trois. I hope that's not regional, but because I've been on the West Coast for a long time and no matter where I go on the West Coast, I can find that wine. 
So I'm sorry if I recommended something that some of you guys can't actually get. It's a good wine. Usually, after whatever you see me drink, that's all I drink. But I'm not going to pour this out. I'm going to drink this. Um, I have stuff that I have to do before I leave. And it's going to be a pleasure to drink this. I have a little cool over there, so I'm going to put it there so it'll stay at a nice little temperature. I'm going to keep it open so it, it can air out some more. See, I'm too lazy. I want to make some more of that spread, but I'm too lazy to do it. So this isn't going to be a long taste test because this wasn't my plan for this week. But I got two questions that I felt like um, I could answer during this taste test segment. Somebody wanted to know, you know, what wine I, I, I drank as an everyday because I used that as the barometer when I was tasting some other wines. And another person wanted an, an idea. I may actually do that periodically, just show you stuff that is very quick, very easy. But people are like, oh, wow, she must really like me. He must really like me. Like I said, most of this stuff, I just took it out of my cooler. I mean, out of my refrigerator. It all comes from the grocery store. And again, I'm rambling. That wraps up another episode of this podcast. We'll see you next week. I hope you like, share, and subscribe. And with that, I want everybody to stay safe, tread lightly, and hopefully I'll see you here or on a trail soon. Sponsored by Midland. Communication for every adventure. The industry leader in radio communication technology and innovation for over 50 years. You have been listening to Waypoint Overland's Random Waypoints. Like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more. <laughs>